What's up people, Niall here to bring you a long awaited episode 2 of Pokemon Facts and Theories. In today's video, I'll be sharing 10 of the more creepier facts and theories about Pokemon. So be sure to sit back, relax and enjoy. Now without further ado, let's get started. Number 10 In Japanese versions of Pokemon, the move Night Slash is actually called Blade Testing. This is a reference to an old practice that some immoral samurai carried out in order to test their new swords. The samurai would wait alongside a road at night for a random passerby and then attack them with the intention to kill. Night Slash also has a critical hit rate that's higher than average which possibly helps support the story as the victim will be left defenceless. Number 9 There's a theory that Voltorb is in fact a Pokeball possessed by Horner. The idea is that when Haunter possessed the Pokeball, the Pokemon inside became trapped and thus the reason why the button is missing. Because of this, Voltorb would then explode due to anger as he could not get out. Number 8 Did you know that in Pokemon Black and White versions, there's a woman on the second floor of Celestial Tower who wishes to battle you because she claims to have a strong Pokemon? When you defeat her, she then talks about how the Pokemon is no longer with her. This could imply that you just killed her Pokemon. Number 7 The original starting town in Pokemon Gold and Silver versions was called Silent Hills. It's still currently unknown why the location was changed, but it could have been to avoid comparisons and reference theories to the horror based video game Silent Hill, which was released during Gold and Silver's development. Number 6 In Pokemon Black and White versions, during certain occasions, the spirit of a deceased young girl will stand on the east side of Marvelous Bridge and will disappear if the player walks towards her. An old lady in the gate to the east of the bridge will explain that the young girl used to play around the area with an Abra before the bridge was built. Number 5 When Paris evolves into Parasect, it's actually being consumed by the fungi that grows on its back. The fungi takes over Paris and does all the thinking, leaving Paris in an essentially zombified state. Parasect's lack of pupil shows that Paris is now nothing more than a lifeless vessel. Number 4 Some believe that Ghastly is in fact the dead spirit of Cloyster. The theory is said that when Cloyster passes on, he loses his beloved shell and only his rounded core is carried on to the afterlife. The purple smoke around him could probably be something that he created himself in order to help feel as though he still has his shell. Number 3 One of the more creepy Pokedex entries belongs to that of Shedinja. It is described as a discarded bug shell that came to life, and that peering through the crack on its back is set to steal one's spirit. If you ask me, that's pretty dark for a game aimed at children. Number 2 A more mainstream theory claims that Gengar is in fact the shadow of Clefable. Many believe that this is highly possible due to the similarities shared between the two. Another thing to note is that Gengar's name in Japanese is Gangar, which is derived from the German word Doppelganger, meaning ghostly double of a person, and also the word Genganger, meaning a spirit that chose not to go to the other world after its death, but instead chose to return to the world of the humans in the form of a ghost. And finally, number one. There exists a lesser known theory that the Generation 1 Pokemon games are actually set in a post-war timeline and that the player is amongst the first generation of people to live in peace after the war. This idea is supported by the fact that you have no father and your rival has no parents, which would imply that they died in the war. Other pieces of possible proof lie in the fact that children go on journeys around the world, that's why most trainers are children or older men of whom have or had jobs related to the military or organised crime. Also notice that hospitals and gyms are everywhere but no forms of entertainment such as movie theatres exist in the games. Also, when talking to Lieutenant Surge before battling him, he talks about how his electric Pokemon saved him during the war.
Well folks, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed today's video and be sure to stay tuned for more Pokemon facts and theories that I have planned for the near future. I know I should have gotten this video out a lot sooner, but it's here now and I definitely plan to make more videos on a regular basis from now on. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone, have an awesome day and I will see you next time.